Will you run for president on the green ticket? Um, I haven't penciled that in my calendar. <laughs> I hadn't done that in 2020 either. I mean, I was getting sued up the ass by the now estranged former members of Dead Kennedys because I didn't want to put Holiday in Cambodia in a Levi's commercial. And yes, Alternative Tentacles owed the money. We made a mistake. We found the mistake, not them. Paid everybody in full, including me. I'm a dead Kennedy, remember? You know, I wouldn't rip off my brothers or who I thought they were, but uh, they sued after all anyway to get revenge on the commercial. And because East Bay Ray seemed to think he was going to be able to sell the thing to Warner Brothers and laugh all the way to the bank, which of course didn't happen. And also made it such an ugly situation I've refused to ever perform with them again. Highest offer I've turned down was $4 million. You know how long it took me to say no? That was it. You know, I, I, you know, I, I, I don't want to, you do something like that. You got to be all in and you really got to tear people's heads off. Like the Stooges did, like the Sonics did, like the radio Birdman did when they resurfaced, you got to be that good or you shouldn't be doing that. And I'm not sure those guys even rehearse. So, um, and, and the complaints I get are just nonstop on that. So anyway, that's a digression, but that was just chewing up and had my time verge of a nervous breakdown. How could this be happening? Blah, 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 blah. Trial in May and after they reneged on a settlement because Ray thought they'd make more money and stuff like that. So, um, huh, I hadn't planned on running for president. Hmm. Oh, well, um, the, well, what happened was that, a couple of guys from the New York State Green Party found my number and called me out of the blue. We had just had a convention and we put your name in the ring and you came in second to Ralph Nader. You want to run? Uh, and penciled that in on my calendar. Oh, I don't know. And only the second conversation. Well, uh, you are green, aren't you? Well, luckily for you, I am. It's a good thing you asked, isn't it? What if I was a libertarian? But um, no, I'm not in. I like taxes and I hate guns. So no. But, um, you know, I'm more socialist in my beliefs. You know, Tim Yohan and the Maximum Rock and Roll said oh, why he was a socialist, that there has to be a government to take, you know, a, the take stuff away from the people who have too much and get it to the people who have too little. That is, you know, that socialism, I dig that. You know, I'm not talking Nicolas Maduro socialism or some of the others who use that term, but, you know, or in some degrees, gangsterocracies. But uh, no, I think, you know, I'm more on the Bernie Sanders side of socialism, let's say, or how they run parts of the, parts of the systems and in some of the countries in Europe. So the Nordic models. Yeah. So people can actually see a doctor when they need one. And sure. Stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, so I thought, but then I thought, you know, if I run, I could draw more people into the Nader campaign who aren't planning on voting and don't give a damn about this at all. Cause they don't think anybody represents them or what are their feelings or what they need. And so I thought, yeah, this could be, I'm not going to run against Ralph Nader. I'm going to run to help Ralph Nader and bring a badly needed punk spirit into the Green Party. And that part succeeded. But well, yeah, again, met a lot of interesting people of that one, including Ralph Nader. No one else thought Diane Feinstein was a drug pusher this time, but uh yeah, it, 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 was, it was a good experience. I mean, I think I was only on a primary ballot in one or two states, but in the National Green Party publications, yes, they had them then and stuff. Then, then uh, yeah, that got around. I had a platform. And there was, unfortunately, there was two different Green Parties and they were rivals with each other. And it came down to old radicals on each one who'd been bickering with each other over personal beefs since the days of Port Huron or the Yippies or SNCC or something. And it was down to that. And it just reminded me of the little hair splitting bickering going on in the political side of the punk scene and maximum rock and roll. I thought, oh my God, haven't they outgrown maximum rock and roll behavior even? What is up with this? And finally they had a convention to unify the two parties. And I was 
honored to be one of the speakers there. And I was pretty blunt about some stuff, but among other things, I mean, I agree with everything in your key values on the platform. Now you want to get more people to vote for you translated into English. What do you mean? Well, um, Oh, what was the one or the environment ecological wisdom and saying, okay. okay, I get it. Everybody all gets in this room because a lot of you people are the exact stereotype granola munchers in the Volvos because there weren't Priuses, Priuses yet. You know, and that stereotype is what we have to get away from. There's a lot of backlash on Ralph Nader because people felt that he was completely ignoring the black community and the brown community and others and didn't even really get it with them which I'm not sure is entirely true. However, there was that rep, like the greens um, do not do well once you get past the color line, in a lot of cases anyway, unfortunately. But um, what do you think is the fix for that? But, but, but what I said in the case of ecological wisdom, look, what is ecological? How do you say that to other people outside of this room? I mean, after the so-called Rodney King riots, which should have been called the Reagan, what was it, Wilson, Tom Bradley riots and stuff, in, in 1992, there was a tr truce between the Crips and the Bloods, and they made a list of demands what they wanted done to help fix the hood and brought it to the L.A. City Council. And one of the top things on the list was, will you please plant some trees? Ecological wisdom. They just didn't call it that. But they want it, it. That was across the board. I mean, I think Michael Moore is totally right that a lot of the people, even today, who were just easy marks for the the Rush Limbaugh's and now the Fox Newses and everything else, um, deep down they're on our side and they don't know it. It's the same core, yes, key values. How am I going to put food on the table? How am I going to feed my family? Will I be able to have a home that is safely, you know, mine and not get evicted because the rents are going way up? This it's, That's across the board. Will I be paid a li living decent wage and not have my fingers cut off at work? That's across the board. Those are the Obama voters who stormed off and voted for Trump in 2016 because they felt so betrayed in part because when they did lose their homes in the big mortgage meltdown in 2008, it wasn't just George W. Bush's people who chose to bail out the banks and throw the homeowners under the bus. It was Obama's people too. You know, Timothy Geithner, the treasury secretary, who'd done some horrible stuff in that regard. And he was a federal reserve board guy in one of the, one of the regional parts of the federal reserve. And then uh, already hated by a lot of people. And that's who he picked. And I mean, my first warning that Obama wasn't all about hope and change was when he picked Biden, one of the godfathers of the war on drugs, the guy who jumped up and down and snorted that John Ashcroft plagiarized his bill with the Patriot Act. You know, he's done some good things, and I will give him credit for that more than I thought he was going to do. But in there's other key areas, especially when it comes to law and order or sneaky, sneaky, stupid foreign policy stuff. And, okay, you can't drill for oil in the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge, but here right next door, <laughs> yeah. go to town. Yeah. You know, Which that's, is something he promised he wasn't going to do. Well, that, that well, you got to watch him. Yeah. Because once he only has his old people around him, he starts reverting back to the same corporate guy he always was. And he, again, wanted to put one of the worst people who really wrecked the Obama uh, uh, bailouts after 2008, you know, Lawrence Summers, Larry Summers, that horrible, horrible guy who back when he was with what wasn't World Bank when he said uh, Africa is vastly under polluted. You know, we should dump toxic waste there. Take it over there because we have to measure the value of each human being by their future earnings stream. He said that. Yeah. Only claimed he was joking in the last year or two or three, but he said that. And what was his reward when he needed another one? Clinton made him treasury secretary. 